we're talking about pest and disease management in the garden. Um, and a lot of the focus when people are dealing with you know, insects and diseases and problems is on the problem, when really the focus needs to be on preparing your garden um, in the first place so that it's healthy and, you know, has the system. What I want everyone to come away from today is thinking about making that garden as healthy as possible so that the plants are as equipped as they can be to stave off any problems when they come along. I think it's a really good idea when you're thinking of what makes good soil is to think about a forest floor and the layers that occur naturally in a natural healthy system and you can have heavy soil down below in fact heavy soil down below is part of the structure that's meant to be there on a forest floor you also get these like lovely layerings of that heavy clay then richer soil until you get to the top where it's almost black and inky and on top of that is the leaf litter. When you look down at the ground it can seem like nothing's happening but as soon as you start to pull the leaves away there's insects buzzing around and then when you dig deeper into that you've got worms and so you've got this whole activity going and that's what we want to try and create in our gardens and in our soil. The worst soil is quite often subdivisions where the top, all the top soil has been scraped off the top down to that clay layer and then they just put some soil on top and there's just there's not that complex strata that is ideal in a garden. The best solution for good soil is just consistent composting over time, just never stopping just putting it on and, and adding that organic matter. You don't want the soil to be dry and you don't want it to be saturated so you want enough of a kind of grainy matter in the soil so that soil, if there's heavy rain, it will flow away. But at the same time you need that spongy that compost element that will actually retain water and moisture in the soil. Fashions of late have been this idea that a low maintenance garden has got as few plants in it as possible, which I actually think is a little bit of a myth because I understand why people think if they've just got a hedge and they've just got those five different plants, they think that they can cope with that because you know they can know what to do with five things but if there's any more than that it sounds difficult and complicated. The truth is that growing things in monocultures you're more likely to get problems actually occurring you know it's a very artificial situation to just have one plant growing on mass and so complexity whilst it can seem overwhelming if you don't know what plants are is actually kind of um, self-supporting. You want your plants spread out a bit, you know, it's it, it, this doesn't mean that you have to have one here, one there, one there, but complexity and those different things going on tends to make for a healthier garden. The basic principle of just not growing the same thing in the same spot, it depletes the soil in exactly in one area greatly, whereas if you move them and you let the soil rest um, and do things like, that's where green mulches like um, comfrey and lupins that have tap roots that drill down into the clay and then you can dig them up. They bring up, they're actually bringing up the minerals from deep down in the soil that you can then dig back into the soil. So yeah, crop rotation is always a good idea. I think um, that part of having a diverse garden is buying into that slightly wilder aesthetic. You can see the catmint through here, this beautiful iridescent blue that is really important for pollination and that is bees' favourite colour. And Bringing these pollinating plants in, into a garden and avoiding um, the pesticides is certainly part of trying to you know, remedy that problem. The other flower colour that attracts insects, but insects of uh, a kind of less friendly nature, um, is yellow. So you'll see the yellow, lots of yellow flowers through the vegetable garden and insects um, really like this. So there's some cards which I'll get you guys to pass around, one to everyone. Just apply it with a layer of Vaseline. So the idea is that the insects buzzing around in the garden come and they get stuck on this card. It allows you to see what is in your garden because one of the most important things about having a healthy garden is actually to know and to be aware of problems as they start to occur and actually observation is really, really key. So if you've, you're having problems with slaters in your garden, this is a way to trap them. They love potatoes and if you just use a cora or a knife and they, they just go, wow, this is so awesome, this is like my dream home and I can eat it. It's, other than slugs, the uh, little passion vine. Or do, 
Hoppers are probably one of the nastiest bugs in Auckland. They're very, very difficult to get rid of. What makes as much a difference as chemicals is, for one thing, I just use a hose, not with anything in it at all, and I blast them when I'm watering the things and I blast them off and they don't they really don't like it. Even better than that is just chopping up some garlic and chili and you can just put it straight into the sprayer or you can do it in a bowl. There's a recipe in your folder and then leaving just some cheap oil and putting it into the soaking it to that for a couple of days or four days and, and then boiling water. Hot water will also help basically infuse that through. And then you've got basically a spray that will send them running. It won't kill them, you're not going to get rid of them forever, but it will keep them off the plants that you don't want to be on. You will need to be consistent with it, you know, and there's not one perfect method. Another thing with snails and slugs that has been very successful, you can actually take a pot and just make a little trapdoor on the side and push it into the soil and, and all the snails go, oh, not only have they made all this food for me, but they've built me this gorgeous house. The more you see that's actually going on in these little complex ways, the more, I guess, and the more engaged you are, the more able you are to control problems and see what's happening before they become a serious problem. Thank you very much for coming out, and I hope you've had a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cool.